Philippe Valgadix, pique et pas de l'autre coin And today was another epic day in Paris where some of the best teams in the world continue their battle for the Summoner's Cup. The 2015 League of Legends World Championship reaches the halfway point in the first week of the group stages. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Worlds Tonight. I'm Quickshot. That's Jat, and unfortunately, this is Deficio, Unlucky. as we're here to talk about day two of Worlds. Um, six more games, 12 in total. Let's yep. start. Hometown, Europe. Origin taking down LGD, <laughs> the number one team from China. I mean, that is a massive upset yeah. already. Well, it's funny because before the day, a lot of the people were talking and every, like all the experts were giving their predictions on Twitter and pretty much all of them were exactly the same and all of them had LGD beating Origin. But in the back of people's minds, especially here, I thought, well, maybe it could happen. But this was literally like third to fourth place in the group predicted by most versus first place. And the shockwaves from Peke, the whole game sure. was just amazing. Yeah, Peke wasn't bad. I mean, Peke was the no, most sure player. Coming into this tournament, we were like, you know, Peke, he's... He was, he's played he was not long, long good. Time, but he's no longer performing at the same Divis high international level. We had so many stats showing how Peke was and like then, the worst mid laner from a major region stats. coming into Worlds. Care. It doesn't matter when he's you get Worlds. Kill. He's gonna pull off the shock with the Wombo combo. I think just for Origin, and I think we have gotten so used to when some of the top teams from China, from Korea, play European and NA teams, like, there's no chance there's gonna be an upset. You know, the European team is going to yeah. lose. And now we start seeing more and more of these top teams dropping games because, again, some of the other regions are really picking up the slack. Origin and well, Fnatic and, of course, CLG is really yeah. looking better and, and better and better. And strange. We're feeling like a lot of that has to do with the strategic choices early in the game. Because we did a lot of talking beforehand about the way teams would be playing the lane swaps and how it seems somewhat chaotic in China and how in Korea they almost never did the turret trade. But North America and Europe were doing the turret trade heavily. And in the past, every time this has happened, we're thinking, oh, yeah, Korea must be doing it better, so everyone else is going to fall off here, but it actually seems to be a little different so far. Yeah, I mean, talking about Korea doing it better, North America and Europe doing it different. TSM in the same group, then losing to KT Rolster. That Look, was for a whole different reason. Yeah, 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 okay, but now, hang on. Neither team came away looking particularly great. Like, TSM yeah. were on different pages, right? They were all over the place. They all got caught at different points. Regardless of the fact my boy Bjergsen did well in lane, everybody <laughs> else in adult right, outside of it. Yeah. But even KT Rolster, they only really got ahead because TSM made mistakes. Now, maybe that's mm -hmm. a little bit of correlation causation. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of hyperbole, but it's mostly true, right? Like, well, I think, looking at that game, KT more forced the mistakes from Team Solomon when it came to how they came okay, back in the fair. lane swap. Uh, when it came to punishing Darius, at least, he was left on his own. It was like, where's yeah. Lost Boy? So, where's Centauri to back him up so they punish it? The same thing didn't happen for Someday, who played that a lot better. Specifically, yes, yeah, Someday did play better than Darius, but I don't think that's because Darius was forced into a mistake. Like, the first time Darius died, he had just seen three people. He assumed they were doing Dragon. Total assumption. Okay, that one I agree And then on. went to get fired. Yeah, that one I agree Right? And <laughs> that's just the beginning of the snowball. The rest of that game was uh, like a just routine rotation around Dragon Pit, and they run and just like, oh, let's just bow in different directions for no apparent reason. That one play, though, you highlight, if you look at how TSM was on the map, they're not giving Darius any chance to do anything. So, like, either he walks down and try and get some farm, or he just walks away and he falls even further behind because, again, Centaurian yeah. and Lost Boy were on the top side of the map, where Wildtail was already doing fine in, like, a, so basically sitting and farming on his own. So, like, as a team, it still doesn't work for them in the early game. That's something they have to fix because now Origin showed up big time. So you have three very, very strong teams, and now Team Summit needs to pick up a slack. They're in a whole bunch of trouble. They are. They played, they, they lost in the worst way, too. Look, I'm assuming they're out, right, in my opinion, because tomorrow... Sure, yeah. One game no, one. I'm assuming it, because tomorrow you've got LGD versus KT Rolster. Like, that's on the schedule for them in the same group. Like, yeah. How important is this going to be for fighting now for first second? Team Solomon has to beat Origin later in the day. And then, of course, now they got to hope that LG can then take down KT so all the teams can tie each other after yeah. just two games. Away. Because I think it's only one game each in this group here. And there's only two games for the other teams. But we're starting to see trends instead. And like yeah. LGD showing that... Yeah, I think most of the expected. pressure is on LGD now. Yeah, because they were the unanimous favorite in this group. Yeah. It was almost assumed they were going to be making it out because they'd beaten EDG and they're the number one seed from China. But now that they've already lost to a team that wasn't even 
uh, predicted to get second in this group. If they start 0-2, since they already were under so much pressure, Right to the roof. <laughs> Talking about pressure, Ku Tigers, number two seed. Look, not a lot of eyes on them really coming into this. Some mixed expectations. Nobody expected them to drop a game to Flash Wolves. Now, Ku Tigers is I such mean... a weird team. <laughs> Some people probably expected Flash Wolves to win their one. This guy yeah. maybe wants I to take the credit for it. I didn't officially predict it. But, I kind of said it randomly uh, in a joking manner, and yeah, then you well, take full about, credit so for it. So on Worlds tonight, we're going to have to spend time on this Flash Wolves Ku game because Flash Wolves is going to beat Ku. Well, we're doing sure. it, right? Like, sure. we're doing it. Hey, okay, Ku Tigers in that game, I think in the pick and ban phase, it was somewhat disrespecting some of these key picks Flash yes. has shown before, like the Nidalee for Kaza. Why would you ban the Gragas instead of his Nidalee pick? I know maybe you want the least in matchup still, I don't buy it. At the same time, you give away Gangplank to a team who then plays Varus as an AD yeah. carry with the guy that just subbed in. I feel like you're so, setting them up to build this massive poke yeah. and you just got punished for it. A couple things, NL always plays Varus. That's one of those things you should have known, and they ended up target banning probably the wrong person since they didn't target ban away his best champion. Every time you're banning, I feel like you need to go for the delta of the champion you ban versus the next closest champion. Uh, but Karsa's the best champion is Nidalee. The best <laughs> champion for NL is Varus. And even the Gangplank, you could tell he wasn't Bandit. comfortable on it. But sure. by the time the late game hit, it was just ridiculous. Just the matter. power you have. Like, yeah. oh, okay, here's a team fight starting. They're going to, like, chase at us. Here's a massive ulti. Here's barrels that's going to, like, one shot you AD carry, basically, if you move forward, yeah. you're not going to deal any damage, and we have all the poke in the you, world. You know what I loved about that as well? In the post-game interview with Stake, he's like, uh, you know, Shox asked, what about the swap from, from uh, Kramer to, to NL? And he's like, no, 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 we planned it. We knew coming into this game, this is what we wanted. Like, this means right. specials had a strategy. They, they were yeah. trying to play the poke. They, you know, planned it ahead. What else have they planned for the rest of this group? Because, of course, yep. CLG and Payne now looking at it and going, well, ooh, you know, yeah, CLG's looking good. Yeah. But a surprise upset, you know, just more games. Between CLG and Ku the next time they play. Is that, that's not a game tomorrow. They have, a, they have the day off, so they don't they play They have the day off, yes. Yeah, so this group is not playing tomorrow. Till Sunday, yeah. So more scouting time for Flash Wolves. Yeah, potentially. Sure. I mean, how much scouting? They already said they have individual plans for all three of the teams. So by the time Flash Wolves plays yeah, the next game, it's going to be a total. Come on, those thing. plans change when you see teams playing. And now we well, start seeing still, this meta. Still, like, still. Yesterday, we didn't see any Lulu. Today, we saw, what, three, four games of Lulu? Yeah, and we, two Lulu losses, right? Yeah, but... We, yeah, we, you we, said she was OP. She is OP. <laughs> I mean, the thing is... She lost twice. Yes, How could she possibly She lost a few games, but she was always ahead in, the, in a lot of the games where she was played, you know, and she wasn't the main reason the team lost. But, like, against Ku Tigers or Flash Wolves, it's so smart than being like, oh, this team is normally really poor in the early game. So let's draft a siege composition that can just get time to scale up and then group and then start yeah. hammering away. Yeah. And there is so little Ku Tigers and could do against them. there was so much poke. Lulu and Alistair, while they can be tanky and really hard to deal with, are actually really bad against poke. You can't preemptively shield poke most of the time, and Alistair can't use his ultimate while he's getting poked because then he's just completely useless. And Black Not Shield. to mention the Morgana in that game, yeah. that you just Black Shield. Obviously, uh, Flash Wolves did a lot to play, but a lot of that actually was decided in the draft. Yeah, I, I feel the same too, but now, you know, you're talking about potential, talking about strengths of teams, blah, blah, blah. CLG Ku is the matchup we're looking forward to. CLG, uh, questionable performance yesterday, mm -hmm. and now today, obviously, a stronger win against uh, Payne. Uh, especially once they got out of the laning phase. Are they looking the real deal? Because the EU teams that are yeah. winning are looking stronger. The CLG, they're looking like the alpha dogs in this group right now, even though they haven't played Ku, which is kind of strange. And the, quote, inferiority that was shown in the Flash Wolves CLG game isn't looking so bad now that the Flash Wolves have beaten Ku Tigers. Oh, I like that. I love everything it is there. relative yeah, in these sure. groups. A little bit too early for me, though, to really call out again who is the heavy favorite despite CLG being 2-0 because yeah. that Flash Wolves game was so close between them. Mm -hmm. I think there's... Again, the more games we get on our belt, right now we're just looking at the trends. What is the team showing? Are they doing the same they did like back here in their own region and coming into it? Have they changed anything? Are they playing the right champions? That's what we're looking at now. And that's why CLG has been looking good because they have some good picks, but they also gotten a little twice. Come on. Yeah. Gotta get rid of that one. Project the double lift has now won two games at Worlds. Yeah. I hate it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yes. Unreal. Old school, right? But it, <laughs> yeah. it works. The last time he was here. Uh, favorites in the group, obviously CLG looking good. Pre-tournament favorites, EDG and SKT, they've not been tested yet, uh, both sitting pretty. They play each other. And yes. let's also remember, in the group, they are with H2K and, uh, of course, the Bangkok Titans. Yeah. Uh, Bangkok Titans have, uh, have been just hammered. I mean, it's, it's been a difficult group stage for them. H2K, glimmers of hope, but I think sure. some of the individual players, not really up to the task. I agree on that one. So let's look at both sides, because it really is kind of sure. a two-horse race. So yeah. with H2K, I think what we're seeing for them is kind of the opposite that we see from Origin, CLG, and Fnatic right now. Because those three teams have shown they can handle these top teams individually, but also on a macro level. With H2K, I see some good moves in the early game strategically, but I think player-wise, 
they don't follow as well. There's too many individual mistakes, and they get yeah. like punished out, they get a little bit too greedy, and that's why they don't manage to do a whole lot in their games. It was one of the worst things for them coming into this group. I think in some other groups, maybe they would take some games, but they're, sure. they're literally against probably the two best teams yeah. at world. I mean, it's impossible group almost. Right, and when the group draw happened, as far as the overall quality of the games at Worlds is concerned, I was really happy about this group because you essentially had two of the weaker teams at Worlds with the two best teams at Worlds. So the rest of the groups would end up being really competitive and we're, we're getting that now. And then tomorrow we get to have the EDG SKT game, which I'm really excited for. I can't wait. I mean, how do you predict it? Because the only you thing don't, we've- You don't. <laughs> <laughs> come on, but all right, EDG come is on. Going to win. Worlds tonight, Worlds tonight. I'm putting you on the yeah. spot tonight. I want you to predict. All right, EDG is going to win. The analyst desk has had predictions all the time. So you're sure. going EDG. EDG is going to win. First of all, KT, uh, SKT plays a lot of rounds, skirmish in the early game. EDG can match that. That's what we saw at MSI as well. I think Mako and Clearlove, those two guys together will beat Bengi and Wolf, as they did at, at MSI. And also, I mean, okay, my only question here for EDG is Amazing J. I'm not being too impressed by him yeah. yet. If he steps up to the plate and goes even at least with Marin, EDG takes the game. That's a swinger for me. I think Marin is going to crush yeah. in the game. So it's, we're split yet. So EDG, here's SKT? Yeah, I think SKT's, SKT will win. I've been a big I'm Marin fan for most of the split, only because he was super high gold share, super high farm jungler, uh, top laner on tank junglers, and people were like, he can't transition to the carry top laner. Mm -hmm. Then he just destroyed on Fiora in the H2K game. Add that to Bengi playing really well, add that to Faker being Faker and being on form here at Worlds, and I think they probably take him down, especially considering the Chinese teams have shown some pretty heavy struggles so far. We'll Except for EDG. We'll have to, we'll but have again, to. Oh. Uh, too yeah. easy game. Okay. Well, I'll it's pause. gonna be super close gaming, I'm, no matter what. I'm we don't know if they want to show anything. I'm at passing least this one of us death. is wrong. I, well, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Your <laughs> powers of deduction hey, are incredible. I had to make one proper prediction. <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at the schedule for tomorrow really quickly, because the one thing we haven't touched on is, of course, Group B, uh, with Fnatic, IG, Cloud9, IHQ, and and like my eyes are on that uh, IGC9 game tomorrow to see how well Cloud9 are going to perform. They surprised everybody against AHQ. <laughs> um, let's assume Fnatic are the favorites against AHQ, but yeah, IGC9. Uh, IG really needs to bounce back. I mean, what they showed yesterday was not acceptable for them. There were too many mistakes in the draft and in the early game. But they, again, they are a team that swings a lot, high highs, low lows. They need to... Uh, get up towards the highs if they want to beat C9, and they should be able to. They're going to be favorites still yeah. going into that game. Again, we've only seen this team play once, so IG is my favorite to take it. Yep. But if they underperform like they did in, in, in day, or on day one, I mean, it's lose. It's so hard to balance the recency of results versus the month of research that went into these <laughs> things, and I so heavily favored IG coming into this group and so heavily disfavored Cloud9. But that one, those one games were so yep. so ridiculously uh, swingy. I'm really excited. I get to cast all three of the final games tomorrow. Uh, I think with Crepo and Doa. So, so those will be great. The IG C9 game. I'm with Fischio. I think IG will probably bounce back. Uh, C C9 I think is doing a really great job of harnessing uh, the power of the underdog. Like the they are really motivated <laughs> by the fact that nobody believes in them and everyone is completely. Was it the six-step plan to world domination? Yeah. <laughs> well, memory serves. We are in the midst of the sixth step. I'm so. aware of that. I saw what happened with Vigar Middle. Like, is this, this is actually happening. So yeah, Cloud9 versus Invictus tomorrow. They were actually behind us while we were chatting here on Worlds tonight. Guys, uh, thank you for chatting. We've got some predictions locked in. We'll see whether which one of you is wrong tomorrow for SKT EDG. He's wrong. I was about to put uh, that, That's wrong. it. Yeah, you guys are both wrong. Whatever. That's, that's, that's it from us here in Paris, guys. We will see you tomorrow as we continue the World Championships. Both of these regions are so far undefeated in the World Championship. Here comes the wave, they're trying Plus to get back too Here early. Here comes with the knockoff, Plus Boy takes a lot of damage from the turret. Someday gets low, gets taken down, can win the game for them. Oh. And the Megan game from score, in comes Nagne! Oh. And it's gonna be a bloodbath there. Here comes the chaos stuff. Korea, 3-0. Which is the most team fan, got boots! Get back, oh, oh. Oh. SKT takes it, GG. So us, so us, so us, so us, so us. He's gonna get a knock up on the Cassini. They're gonna keep running his death. He's hopping, he doesn't have that much damage, but he's gonna try. Flashes burn, first ball to make him. A very clean win, because they undefeated after two games. It's
I get solo killed by the Brazilian faker. I want you to be right there for me. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, dude. CLG will knock it down. Much improved second game.